We originally started Money Undercover before the pandemic to take a look at some of the areas that were less transparent capital markets uh, that were just attracting so much money. And now we take a look at those areas that are still taking attracting quite a bit of money, although and uh, quite a bit of notice in some other ways. Joining us now is someone who can answer some questions that people keep raising about, in particular, commercial real estate at a moment where people are wondering, what is the next shoe to drop? Could it be this one? Mark Gibson joins Jones Langless Sal Capital Markets America's CEO. Uh, I want to start there, Mark. I mean, you've heard all of these discussions about how commercial real estate is the next shoe to drop. Do you think that that is an accurate description of the tsunami of potential defaults that could be hanging out there? Lisa, um, thanks for the question. I, I don't, uh, simply because commercial real estate, like every asset class, adjusts to the cost of capital. <clears throat> And uh, as a result, just given uh, the Fed's flight against inflation and the uh, cost of short-term capital increasing at a very rapid pace, everyone has had to step back and reassess values and deal with what every industry is dealing with. Uh, so we don't see this tsunami of uh, defaults and issues in commercial real estate uh, as is being portrayed primarily because most of the investors in commercial real estate um, have been conservative in their capital yeah. uh, constructs, and they are beginning to think about uh, a little bit higher for normal and adjusting accordingly. I love you will have tactical. Wait, hold on a second, Mark. And I'll let you continue in one second. But the way that you're talking about it, you know, readjustments and valuations, the real estate doom loop is how the Wall Street Journal just described it. And we're looking at office REITs uh, falling the most since 2020. We're looking at yields uh, that are pricing out a lot of people from the real estate market with the transactions falling off a cliff. Is this a market right now that is functional? Or would you say that this is sort of a broken market in terms of price discovery when it comes to some of the loans and transacting? I think any time is a great question. This I think any time you get a rapid increase in the cost of capital, you have what we call a bid ask gap. So you have both sellers and buyers trying to figure out who is right. So do they believe that the cost of capital will continue to increase, or do they believe believe we will normalize at a different level? And therefore, if you're a seller, you're going to believe the latter, and if you're a buyer, you're going to believe the former. And the question is, they generally need more data for a period of time to determine well, what is an accurate cost of capital, where do we see it going? And for today, uh, in today's world, what we're counseling people is just think about, just take a breath and think about why are we where we are? And the common enemy is inflation. Do you believe the Fed will conquer inflation? Most long-term investors do. And the only debate is time. So once that occurs, then what is the risk we're underwriting? And most of these long investors are beginning to discount inflation risk and really focus on recession risk because historically that is what happens when you have such a rapid increase uh, in rate moves. Well, so there is a normal bid ask gap pause. So transactional volumes in the U.S. are down 60% in commercial real estate, and that is normal. Uh, but we're beginning to see that change, uh, particularly as people adjust to the cost of capital and we have rationalization of pricing. So we're beginning to see transactional volume inch up as a result of that. What about in office real estate in particular, given the fact that it's not just inflation, it's also the idea that occupancy is dramatically lower than where it was pre-pandemic? Occupancy, we could spend an hour talking about occupancy in all of his buildings, but uh, the narrative is going to change significantly in our view over the next 12 months, which is work from work will be the new mantra. Uh, and we're beginning to see that take place uh, across every industry uh, in commercial real estate. And the primary driver for that is falling labor productivity across every industry. And the need for training, the need for collaboration and teamwork and culture uh, is really uh, beginning to take precedent in every industry, again, across the United States. So we think the narrative on office is going to be considerably better in the next 12 months, but there is going to be a vast uh, stratification of values. Yeah.
across the office sector. And what I mean by that are buildings that have been constructed over the last uh, 10 years or so uh, are going to get preference in terms of occupier interest, uh, meaning tenancy interest and in where they go. So there are gonna be quite a few haves and have nots in the office sector and commercial real estate. Mark, just quickly here, uh, we only have about a minute left, and I'm wondering whether how far will you think we are in this downdraft, particularly in the office space uh, area, which is down, I believe, about 30 percent, even in less liquid markets. How much further do we have to go? One never knows. So it depends on the cost of capital where we see the inflation risk, uh, Lisa, there. But I would tell you from our perspective and where we're seeing the market, uh, react in terms of actual transactions taking place. We just announced a fairly large trade in New York. Uh, there are many more that are happening. Our belief is that we are at bottom uh, from an office valuation perspective. It's a very general statement. Uh, as we stated earlier, they're going to be significant have and have nots. But generally speaking, I think, I think the office sector has found uh, a bottom level. Mark Gibson, thank you so much for uh, spending the time with us at a time where everyone is wondering what is going to be the ramifications, particularly for banks that own a lot of real estate. Thanks again. Over to you, Guy. Thanks so much. Great stuff, Lisa. Thank you very much indeed.